Hey guys, so I'm Jacob Beerworth. I'm going to be detailing how to do project one on Fluent. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to start off by opening up our workbench, opening up a Fluid Flow Fluent project, as you can see here. And to begin, we're going to start with our geometry. We're going to open and design modeler. So once we're here, we're going to go to the XY plane. We're going to look at it flat. And we're going to switch our units to millimeter. And on that plane, we're going to create our sketch so we can start our rectangular model. Yeah. All right, so now that we have our idea, we are going to need to dimension it. So, okay. We're going to set the height to five for the project's requirements, and we need a relationship of to the magnitude of 50, so that would make our length 250 millimeters, okay? So now that we kind of have our model, we can get, we can get a concept. So this is from sketch, apply, generate. Now we have our model we can work with. So now we're gonna go to our mesh, which is gonna be one of the harder parts. Okay, we'll figure it out. All righty, so now we're looking at our bar, okay? Begin, we're going to insert a method onto our plane, apply. And we're going to add uh, quadrilateral dominant rectangles throughout the element. So from here, I think we're going to insert some sizing. And begin by selecting these sides. And the reason why it's not working currently is because I need to edge select. First, we're going to start with the sides. Apply. And now when it comes to element size, we're going to go number divisions because we want to get a bunch of rectangles to analyze. We're going to turn off the growth capture. So that way we can then make the behavior hard. Okay. Here's our mesh. We're starting to get something going. We're going to insert another sizing. This time, we're going to pick the top and the bottom. Apply. Number of divisions this time. We're going to bump it up a little bit into 500. And also the growth curvature, so we can give it a hard behavior. Generate. Okay. Give me a second. Here we go. See, it's starting to look very nice. Finally, we'll add a face meshing to that face itself. Apply. Generate. Awesome. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to do here is actually name just a couple of the pieces. So we're going to be referring to these sides of the whole experiment. So. Go 
Now, finally, another question. Okay, this actually doesn't look right, so I'm going to redo that. I don't think I was on edge select. That's okay. We can do this again. Okay. Okay. Like it. Right. So that's really all we have with our mesh. Now, before we head to set up and update it, make sure everything's caught up. Now we can move to our setup for case one of our cell flow. Here's our subject we'll be working with. Okay, to begin, guys, got to make sure that this is all laminar. Okay. And then we go to materials. We are working fluid, air. Now, some values that worked well, we have a density of one, and a viscosity for our first case is going to be one e to the negative five. Change and create, close. Now, when we're looking at our boundary conditions, we want to make sure that this is a velocity inlet, and we're going to give it a velocity of eight. Fine, close. Get everything else. Make sure the outlet's pressure, overall stationary, looks good. Now, with our reference values, we're going to choose from the inlet itself. Okay. Now we'll initialize this. Run the calculation. Actually, we're going to set the number of iterations to the sake of time 200. Yes. Now we wait. Computer do its thing. It's looking good so far. Yeah. All right, so this calculation is complete. To check the results, I like to click vectors, new, trip arrow, see the display, and close, as you can see here. The cell flow is already generating. Awesome. Now we can move to our final part for case one. Make sure it's updated. Amazing. What is this? We're almost done with case eight. All right, so now we are looking at the results section. To begin, I like to actually input your contour, okay? And set the variable is based off velocity view. And the range is good. And the range good. Good, 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 good. And we're going to make the location is actually going to be symmetry one. Increase your number of contours to 100. 
fun. This should show us our generation. Awesome. So this is looking correct. You have a Pixel flow here, as you can see. Now we want to be able to graph this, right? First things first, we have to take relations from the midpoint. In meters, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, you know, we're going to try out the contour and make sure we have a line in the middle. That looks good. We're going to add one more. Then here we're going to put it almost at the end, almost the limit. Get correct values. If you put it all the way at the end, it can come out pretty wonky. Fine. Awesome. Okay. So now that we have our relations, we can now add chart. Let's chart one. Tireless. Velocity. Profiles. Add series, add series one. We have the location as our midpoint. We'll increase a new one. And our second location is going to be our endpoint. All right. Now our x axis, we're going to want the velocity u. Our y axis is just going to be y. But, all right, this is looking about right. As you can see, velocity is reaching. It's maximum as it moves to center. This labels a correct Poisson flow. Okay. Go back to 3D view onto it. Right. This looks about right. Here's your velocity profiles. Um, if you want to make the profiles a little bit more neat, we can make it horizontal. Points. X. That's position. Y. Good. This is about it. These are the two things that would be checked. Uh, project. Okay. Now we can move to case B. So since we're going to use the same setup in mesh, this is really the only spot we are going to adjust now. So we keep the viscous luminosity, keep it laminar still for viscous. Um, now for the properties of air, we're going to change the viscosity for the cuvette flow. Now, we're going to adjust boundary conditions to inlet. Now, we're going to be a pressure inlet. Okay. Apply. Yes. And now, our upper wall is going to be moving. Her covet flow standards. Make this a moving wall. We'll make this 0 0.1 meters per second. These values come out to be very nice. Apply, close. I mean, we'll check. Don't trust it sometimes. Close. The reference values are still going to be from the inlet. Um, good. We'll initialize this. Run calculation. 200 iterations. All right. <clears throat> One minute. Awesome. So, as you can see already, this is showing to label the Covet flow. This looks right. So now we'll really go and check this in our results. Update. Update. Now let's go open our results. Yes, refresh. Awesome, so as you can see here, velocity values have changed. The contour velocity map has also changed. This is still simulating a nice covet below. Um, let's go check our chart viewer. So this will update. 
Awesome. So now we have a linear relationship. Okay. This is right for the covet flow when we're looking at the chart view. Maybe. All right. So that's case two. All right. Now for the final case, we are going to final case. It's going to be a combined covet in a pre-sale flow. So there's a couple things we're going to have to change here. Okay. First things first, we're going to go back to the air quality. We're going to bring the viscosity back to our first case. Then we'll go back to our boundary conditions. And our inlet is going to go back to a velocity inlet. And here we're going to give it a velocity magnitude of 8 meters per second again. Fly. Close. Now we'll go to our upper wall here. And we're going to make it a moving wall, but we are going to match the speed of our inlet. So we'll push that to 8 as well. Apply, close. And now we go to our reference values. Make sure it's still at our inlet. Awesome. Okay, looks good. Now we can initialize this. And in the calculation. See what's going on here. This looks like it's starting to generate. So what we're gonna do is go look at results. Let's update. Let's... Yes. Awesome. So this is looking right. This is looking like a combined flow state. If you watch the velocity itself, <clears throat> the relationship seems about right. The final way we can check this is checking the chart view. The outgoing. So yeah, guys, this is looking right. As you can see here, we're starting to meet each other. It's the correct relationship for the combined flow. Now for the final part of the project, you would want to find maximum velocities at corresponding heights. So to do that, you would go file, export, and then you can load it up as a uh, Excel document to one of your folders, open it up, and then proceed from there. So that concludes this video. Thank you for watching for the tutorial. Mm-mm. <clears throat>